Welcome to the Gig Boss Podcast, where musicians go to talk about artistry and industry. My name is Adam Eckler, and it's my mission to get you the tools to have a thriving career in music. What do you think of that new tagline, artistry and industry? I feel like after 30 shows, that's what this show is about. It's like I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. And I'm so interested in artistry. I, I love the idea of honing that. And I love talking to artists and just asking them how they conceptualize music and learning from that. And that's a lot of what we've done on the show. We've also talked about industry a lot, and I want to continue doing that. So the new tagline for the show is going to be artistry and industry. Gig Boss Podcast, artistry and industry. We have a new logo being made right now. I appreciate you all listening very much. I appreciate you all listening very much. It's, it's growing every week, and that's really exciting to see. And today, we're going to be talking about how to fall in love with music again. And uh, for those of you that have been in the game a little while, this one may be useful. Um, I've certainly dealt with this myself. I've certainly dealt with this myself. I tend to be somebody who keeps the fire lit. And I'm going to talk about the ways that I do that. I think I have a list that is maybe one, two, three, four, five, six things long. So I guess I could say six ways to fall in love with music again. Like the internet clickbait titles. I got to get good at that stuff. I should just be more clickbaity. Maybe more people will listen. Uh, yeah, never mind. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be real. I'm going to be authentic. And I'm going to keep coming at you with the truth and things that I got going on in my life. I'm really excited. I got a call. I played with Steve Cole not long ago. Steve was on the show. And I played with his band, and he just called their book and festivals. He dumped his manager, and he got a new manager. And one of his things, I asked him on the show, if you remember, I was like, hey, man, you know, you said when we were hanging that you didn't like playing to tracks. You liked playing with real musicians. So, like, why play with tracks? And his whole thing was, like, festivals don't want to pay that kind of money anymore. And he dumped his manager, and he found somebody new. And now this new manager is not afraid to ask for more money, and all these festivals are giving him the money. So now we're going to go on tour. We're going to do this thing. And he called me. His manager called me and said, we want you to be the trumpet player, and then we're going to hire out trump, uh, trombone saxophone in the other cities where we go. Um, so, And I'm going to help them do that, help them hire out the rest of the horn section. So I'm honored to have been asked to go out on the road. We're going to do festivals now. Norfolk, Virginia is booked. There's something in Cabo in Mexico uh, that's supposed to be on in the in the queue and another thing in Minneapolis and hopefully more coming so I'm, I'm excited I'm excited to be a part of that and to have been called sometimes you sit around and you're like man what happened I was touring with everybody and then COVID hit and then like the lead singer one of my bands moved to LA and the other band something happened and now that band's not touring <laughs> and now it's like I'm starting to get these other calls to do these really cool things. I'm very excited uh, to be a part of that. And I did get, I was going to say this because I, I talked to somebody who listens to the podcast and they were like, you should update us on whether or not Corey Wong is calling you because you talk about it so much, which is like, oh man, I shouldn't be talking about that so much. But you know, I did get a call to do something and then it got bumped. I was going to say like, I'm so excited because I got another call to do, record with Corey Wong. But is if there was a thing that was in the works, I'm not going to say much about it just to not jinx it. <laughs> Hopefully I get called again. But my guess is that I'm probably like second or third on the list of people who get called to do those things. So it's like maybe the two trumpet players who Corey usually tours with couldn't do it. And so they called me. Um, I think that's probably what happened. I'm just happy to be on the list. I'm just happy to be on the list, baby. And get those calls. I got I got that call and then it got bumped. And they were like, oh, the you know, there was a special guest who's gonna do it that, that ended up something came up and, and so it didn't end up happening. But I'm still in the loop, I'm still in the circle, and I'm I'm excited about that. I've got a new record coming called Sampled. I've talked about it a couple times, and I have the tracks back from most of the artists who are sampling my big band music and turning them into new songs, which is really exciting. And I started lining up collaborators for those tracks as well. So I've got some poets, spoken word artists, rappers, horn players, all kinds of stuff. And that is coming soon. And those of you who listen to the show, you know this already, but we've got an app called Gig Boss. That's an organizational tool for freelancers and band leaders, group leaders, anybody that does any kind of freelance work. But we had musicians in mind when we built it. And 
we're building more and more features into the app every month. And now this month, the month of October, is the month that we start building October 2022, I should say, because I hear I see people going back and listening to the older episodes. So if people are coming back and listening to this, hopefully it's built by now. But month of October 2022, we are starting to build the financial tracking side of the app. So it's going to be like a books side. So you'll be able to do peer-to-peer payments. You'll be able to you'll be able to put in all of your merch, and then you'll be able to track all of your merch and sell your merch via the app. You'll be able to track mileage. Whether or not you owe somebody a 1099, if you paid somebody more than $600, it'll be like, hey, you owe this person a 1099. Or if somebody's paid you more than $600, and you can track, you can do that like manually. You can track all your gigs as a freelancer who plays in multiple bands, which is really what I imagined when I first started building this thing, because that was my life. It was like I played in a dozen bands, and I couldn't keep track of how much I made in each band, and whether somebody owed me tax documents or how much I even made, you know? So all that stuff was like, that was the reasoning behind it. So if you're a freelancer and you play in a bunch of bands and you want to track it all, it's like, use Gig Boss. Because you can then, when you put in the details of the event, you can choose freelance as the category and then you can, and then you can add that stuff to your Google Calendar. And so if you're somebody who uses a Google Calendar all the time, but you could, you could use Gig Boss as your central hub. You have your chronological scrolling feed of gigs and you could click through the squares and see, you know, you could see how much a gig paid. You could see whether or not you've been paid. You could see where the gig was, what the mileage was, all that stuff. Uh, so the new side of the app, the book side, is kind of the more advanced financial tracking stuff and peer-to-peer payments and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to be able to use that stuff, it's going to eventually be behind a subscription wall. That's how we're going to make money on this thing. We've never charged for it. we spent oodles of our own money to make this thing. I'm really proud of how it's turning out. We're going to make it look more beautiful and we're going to make it do more stuff. And the stuff that's there now, the stuff where you can create a group and you can create an event and you have a scrolling chronological feed of gigs and you can view it in calendar mode or you can view it in squares mode, that stuff's always going to be free. So if you're using it now, you're in. I mean, if you're using it whenever you download it, that's that part is always going to be free. It's the other stuff that we're adding now that'll be behind maybe 10 bucks a month to be able to track all that stuff and it'll be really helpful tax time will be really a lot easier i have a lot of experience with uneasy tax times because of being a musician so we're trying to streamline all that stuff i'm sorry i'm yapping about it so much we're going to talk about how to stay in love with music how to fall back in love with music which is sometimes not an easy task if you're getting burnt out i mean you all know the feeling so you've been working super hard, been grinding. I had this month, one year, it was July, and I played 36 shows, I think. 36 shows in the month of July. And so I was playing every day, sometimes more than once a day. And we got to my birthday on August 8th, and I had no money. And I was like, what just happened? <laughs> I can't work any more than I'm working. Like, what else can I do? And I'm like teach. I was like running a jazz camp and teaching private lessons and doing all these different things. And it's like it still wasn't. On my, of course, at that time we had kids and my wife had left her job, and so like we didn't have her income anymore. And so it was me providing for a four person family with a mortgage and a couple cars. And so it was no small feat. And I did it for a little while. <laughs> Uh, but holy smokes, it was tough. And of course, like, you know, I was just, I just felt so defeated by that when my birthday rolled around feeling like we don't even have any money for me to go like play golf or something like what the heck. So I fell in love with music again and again and again and again. And it's like, you have to, you have to continually come back to it with with the eyes of a bright-eyed college student who's studying music or a bright-eyed high school student who loves music. I remember telling some friends of mine that I was going to major in music when I was in middle school. And I don't think, I don't think I knew what that meant. I don't think I knew what majoring in anything meant at the time, but I said that I remember saying that sixth grade, maybe seventh grade. I liked being first chair in the concert band. I liked playing Peter Gunn in the jazz band. (laughs) 
you know, so I, I, I knew I loved music. I took guitar lessons from the time I was young. Those of you who listen to the podcast, maybe you've heard this stuff, but I always played music from the time I was little. I was always drawn towards it. I was always singing and humming and driving my siblings crazy and driving. I was in math class humming during tests and my math teacher would call home and be like, hey, you can't. Adam's humming during tests. I said this recently, uh, but this is me. This is real. This is it. Music has always been like in me. And I've had times when it's like, uh, I can't keep going. Can I keep going? And here are the things that I do to keep going. Uh, so, so number one is you have to avoid. So this is something to avoid. This isn't something to do, I guess. This is something to avoid. You have to avoid the jealousy trap. Avoid the jealousy trap. And this one I think is obvious, but it's easy to look at someone else with a gig, look at someone else with a lot of views on their video. I mean, like on the internet, it's easy to be like, oh, why is that person getting so many likes on their videos? Right? There's a lot of that jealousy thing. And you just have to avoid the jealousy trap. You have to celebrate the victories of your fellow musicians. And there's that old saying, a rising tide lifts all boats, right? And I've really felt that way. I've always felt that way. I felt like, I have always felt like if something good happened for a trumpet player in Minneapolis, it was good for all trumpet players in Minneapolis. It brings a spotlight to the scene. It brings a spotlight to the instrument. Maybe it makes people think, oh, I could have trumpet in my band too, right? It it opens up opportunities. So there is no reason, there's no real logical reason to be jealous. It just festers. It gets inside you and it festers and it, and it turns you into the kind of person that you don't want to be. And so avoid the jealousy trap. Celebrate the victories of your fellow musicians. I've been really intentional about doing that throughout my career. I love seeing people succeed. And now that I've had students that are like, I had them when they were in fifth grade and now they're like professional composers in LA. It's really fun to celebrate the victories of my students, knowing that I had some kind of hand in cultivating that experience for them. But also just like my friends in the scene, like, yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You got that gig. That's awesome. I'm so happy for you. That's awesome. You know, it's like some stuff's going to happen for you too as long as you're continuing to grind. And so avoiding the jealousy, jealousy trap is key because if you're jealous, you start getting bitter, it's hard to keep going. It's hard to keep practicing. It's hard to keep believing that there's light at the end of the tunnel. All right, avoid the jealousy trap. Revisit albums that influenced you in your early years. That's number two. Revisit v albums that influenced you in your early years. This is something I've been doing lately I listen to a lot of new music, partially because of the podcast. I've, I've interviewed tons of artists, and I listen to like their whole catalogs before I talk to them. Some of them I already did, because I just liked their music already, but some of them I heard them in some other groups, or I admire them in a lot of different ways, but I hadn't really checked out a lot of their music yet. And so I've been spending a lot of time listening to music, new music, and that has been fun for me as well. And that's definitely an option. If new music really turns you on, then like do that. But for me... Going back to the albums that originally sparked the flame, you know, like for, for me, that was like listening to Clifford Brown study in Brown something, you know, it's like, that's a jazz record for those of you who don't know. Or like I went back and I listened to a bunch of dashboard confessional. I know. I'm sorry. I know. But I loved that stuff. And I used to like scream, sing it in the car when I was driving and I write a lot of songs on guitar that are like pop tunes. And I don't really like, if you put a chart in front of me with like jazz chords, I could not play guitar. I could do that on piano. Cannot do that on guitar. <laughs> guitar has always been this really pure organic thing with me. It's been like, it's a, it's a, it's a place of exploration and it will always remain a place of exploration. I will not, I started learning scales and stuff like that. And like my buddy, uh, my buddy who's now uh, out in California, Evan Montgomery is a wonderful guitar player who doesn't play a whole lot anymore, I don't think, but wonderful guitar player and friend. He was like, you got to learn where all the G's are on the neck and you got to learn where all the C's are on the neck. And so I started doing that and I started practicing scales. And so I can do some of that. I started practicing pentatonics, of course. But 
for the most part, like guitar is this very pure, very organic thing for me. And it's, it's a, it's an opportunity for me to just, it's almost an escape. It's like I, I spend, sometimes I spend all day working with students, teaching them about jazz harmony and improvisation and listening and all kinds of really important aspects. Sometimes I spend all day in the studio recording trumpet for artists around the world, or, you know, I'll spend a whole bunch of time on my own music. But when I get done with that and I come home, my guitar is sitting on the stand next to the couch and I pick up my guitar and I play. And it's like a, it's like a fun release. So like that, and I'll play like a dashboard confessional song, you know, or I'll play some song that I learned when I was in high school. And it's like going back to those roots of like why you fell in love with the thing in the first place helps me to kind of go like, oh yeah, I really do love this. Like go back and listen to Blue Train, go back and listen to Sonny Rollins, Saxophone Colossus or Way Out West or, you know, go listen to a Love Supreme. I spent a bunch of time listening to a Love Supreme again recently. That was really like, Love Supreme was one of the albums that really got me maybe want to go yeah i want to major in jazz i want to really learn this thing i want to dig in i always loved like the older stuff the history and bebop i mean like later i guess later bebop hard bop a little bit of bebop bebop kind of like a real heavy bebop like charlie parker dizzy gillespie that stuff came later and i'm talking all about jazz but i also love r&b and hip-hop music and so you know sometimes i'll go back and I'll listen to some of those older school. I'll, I'll listen to like things fall apart. The roots record, uh, or black star, you know, that first black star album. I listened to the, the new black star album a bunch too, but I'll go back and listen to the, the original black star album. And it's like, you're walking in somebody else's shoes, you know, it feels like, Oh yeah, I really love this stuff. And this is my, this is where my love of this stuff comes from. So I'll, I'll go back and listen to rare earth. I was listening to rare earth again, which was a Motown band. It's like the first white band signed by Motown. And my dad loved Rare Earth, of course, you know. And so he, because he loved Motown. I mean, we listened to Temptations a, a ton growing up. And he loved doo-wop music. And so we listened to a lot of like 50s doo-wop stuff, the Penguins and stuff, uh, the Coasters. But I listened to Rare Earth again recently. And I was like, yeah, man, you know. I was listening to all these great tunes that I that I grew up driving my dad's car around and singing the singing the songs. That really helped me get back in it again as well. So go back, revisit some of those albums that influenced you in your early years. Check them out again. Try to get in that. Try to get in that early mindset, that love mindset. It's just like why? Why were you drawn to this thing in the first place? All right, we all need to we all need to go back to that place sometimes. Number three, listen to your new, oh, listen to new music and celebrate the victories of others. Oh, yeah. So I sort of talked about this. Listen to new music and celebrate. So it's like go back to the old albums and listen to new music. So that's what I've been doing lately. And that and that's, and I told you because of the podcast, you know, interviewing all these amazing artists, Caroline and Wayne Tucker. I just released one with Wayne, you know, listening to music by Katie Ernst and, um, all these amazing artists, King Perry, Cameron Kinghorn, who was on the show early on, Kevin Gastonway. It's a lot of amazing artists I've talked to that are doing incredible things. And I'm inspired by them. I'm inspired by them. And so when I listen to their music, I avoid the jealousy trap. And I just go like, man, look at this work that this person put into this. This is real. This is real work. This is sweat equity and it deserves to be praised and it sounds great and I like it and I'm drawn to it for these various different reasons. And I can find something in almost everything that I like. And so I, I listen to a lot of new music as well. I'm going to listen to a lot of Jacob Collier too. Jacob Collier is one. I'd love to get Jacob Collier on the show. So if you know Jacob, let him know. I'd love to get him on the show. I've been listening to Jesse volume three every morning in the gym and now I now get up, oh, man, this is kind of hard to admit. I don't stay up late anymore. And I get up at 6 a.m. every morning and I go to the gym. I do five days a week in the gym. Different things, lifting mostly, but I do a lot of like cardio things. I'm trying to trying to cut cut the pounds and pack on some muscle. But I listen to Jacob Collier almost every morning and podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. 
I like podcasts. I listen to How I Built This a lot. Because I'm like building a company, you know? Gig Boss, I need people to talk about it. Tell your friends. Tell them it's great and it works. And tell them about this show. That's the, that's one of the big things. It's like, if you love this show and you love me yapping on the mic, please tell your friends about it. Because I could, I could use the help. Even though we're growing. I mean, we're growing every month. Numbers are numbers are up every month, which is really exciting. Listen to new music and celebrate the victories of others. We are all in this together, is what it says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't I can't stress that enough. Celebrate the victories of others. That's big. It's big, and I, I try to do that. Caroline just talked about that on on the podcast on her episode. She talked about texting a friend of hers, and just being like, you know, I finally sat down and listened to your whole record, and it's fucking awesome. You know, <laughs> it's like artists love hearing those things. They love hearing those things. I, I, I had, you know, I played on the golden hour, the, the record with Corey Wong and Dave cause and, and a friend of mine who I play music with sometimes. He's a piano player. He texted me and he was like, I've had such a hard six months and this record is just so positive and so fun. And it's really helped me get through these hard times, you know? And I sent that to Corey. I was just like, Hey man, I just thought you should know, like, a friend of mine just sent me this this text. I think artists need to hear that. And sometimes it's like, it's enough to keep us going, you know? It's enough to keep us going. So if you love the music, if you love listening to someone's music, it's like, say something. Gas them up. Gas them up. It's free to gas them up. Gas at the pumps are expensive, but it's free to gas up your friends. Do it. Go hear live music. Number four. Go hear live music. This one is really big. If there, you know, the only times, the, not the only times, I guess so some of the the times that really stick in my brain that I was so eager to run to the practice room and play were times when I was inspired by a live show. And so live music is a big one on the list for me. Go see a hero of yours. Go hear a hero. Go see them in live in, in concert somewhere. Go see your friends. Be on the scene. Be in the shit. It's really gonna help jumpstart your your passion. That's always what it's done for me. And maybe that's my ego too. There's a little bit of that competitive edge that I have. It's like I grew up playing sports. Grew up watching a lot of sports. I still watch a lot of sports. Okay, I don't. I watch the Steelers. That's the only sports I watch. And every now and then I can sneak some Timberwolves games if I plan ahead. But for the most part, it's like I only watch 17 weeks of football, provided the Steelers don't make the playoffs, and and that's been the case lately. But the Steelers are my are my team. I watch I watch some football. I'm a competitive person. I grew up. Being, I was sort of like coached to be a, perf- a competitive person. And, and so I am competitive and I do think like, oh yeah, yeah, you can do that. I'm going to do this. You know, it's like, I do have a little bit of, <laughs> I do have a little bit of that. I know that's a little bit douchey. I, I get it. I can see that in the mirror, you know? Um, but it's part of what helps fuel me. It's part of what helps keep me going. And, and when I got to Lawrence as a student, and there were trumpet players that played circles around me. I mean, it was like Jeff Ostrowski was there, and he was this amazing. And he's going to come on the show, I think. He toured with Jersey Boys. He was on Broadway for a long time. He's a trumpet player, a ranger, really great dude. Real bro It'll be a real bro episode. <laughs> uh, but Jeff was playing. I mean, he sounded like Freddie Hubbard when he was improvising, and he could play lead trumpet. And it was like, I couldn't do any of that. I was just like, I just loved it and wanted to be around it. And that really kicked me in the ass. And I... And I loved that. I loved that feeling that there were people that could really play that were ahead of me because it gave me some fuel, you know? It was like, man, I want to get there. I want to get there. I know I can get there. And and I think that's harder. Like, as you get older, you start, when you know how much work it takes to get to a certain level, then it then it becomes a bit more daunting. It's like this, it's like an element of self-awareness. It's like, oh, now that I know how much work it takes to get to this place, it's it's harder to get up in the morning and get working on it because you know it's going to take a long time. 
but it's also it's also like your secret weapon. It's like you know what needs to be done. You know the work that needs to be put in. You don't become Arturo Sandoval overnight, even if our you know <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't Arturo Sandoval overnight, but you know even if players were sort of prodigy level when they were in high school, like uh, somebody like Lee Morgan, you know, he was like prodigy level musician, Jacob Collier, you know, there's kind of people that make you go like, I want to quit, but it's like, that's not really, I've never, that's not really my takeaway usually from people. I see people say that a lot. <laughs> But that's not usually my takeaway. My my usual takeaway is like, okay, I hear that. That's cool. I like that. And for me, it's like I I really like Jacob Collier's music. I like music that kind of bends your brain. Um, and some of my students were joking that like you have to have a, you know, huge IQ to listen to Jacob's music. But I think he's done a really good job of like continuing to have his music sort of be like madness, and also making it really accessible. And fun to listen to. I think he's done a really good job of that. Scroll less and create more. That's number five. Scroll less and create more. I struggle with this one. I struggle with this one. Because social media, it's like addictive, you know? It's like you can really get you can really get hooked on scrolling. And so I try to be really intentional about posting what I want to post and leaving. Or going on, commenting on some people's things which a lot of time is like, I'm, I'm gassing people up. I'm like, this, this sounds awesome. I'm, this is really cool. I'm really happy for you. Yada, yada. You know, like I'm doing that partially because it's like, that's the kind of stuff I want to hear. But I also believe that sincerely when I look at those people's posts. And so I try to do a little bit of that. And there's this guy I listen to sometimes. He has this podcast called grow the show, Kevin Schmidlin. And he talks about this thing called TDE, targeted daily engagement. And that's like when you go, you set like a timer, 20 minutes, and you only go on social media for that amount of time. And you engage with people who you want to be in their professional circle. You engage with them meaningfully on their posts with the idea that sometime down the line, you're going to reach out and be like, hey, can you come on my podcast? Or hey, can you, you know, take a solo on my next record or whatever? I, I like that. I like that idea and that approach, like meaningful interaction. And then when the timer goes off, you're out. You're not scrolling. You're not looking at your phone all the time. Some people just really hate social media. And so like setting the timer is like, okay, I got to stay here for this long. And some people get addicted to it and scroll all the time. And so that timer is, let's get out. <laughs> let's get out of here and create something. And so I, I really try to, for me, like I, I, I'm always, even when I'm exhausted and I come home and I've spent all day doing whatever I've been doing, it's like I still go to the piano and play and write something, write something with lyrics. Or I go to the computer late at night and I layer a whole bunch of horns on somebody else's track because they're asking me to do that or whatever. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of energy left in me if I'm not spending too much time getting depressed on the internet. It's also depressing, right? It's like it has scientific links to <laughs> higher rates of depression. So it's just like, it's not good for us to see the best side of everyone all the time because that's not what everyone's lives are actually like. They're only, for the most part, they're only showing you the best stuff. And so be encouraged that the grass is really not that much greener. It's a great track on Jacob Collier's record, the Jesse Volume 3, where one of the spoken word artists talks about that. I bloomed. I grew. I realized the grass wasn't greener. Grow, hear, live music. Scroll less. Create more. Number six. Last one. This is going to be a quickie. Last one. Take a break. Take a vacation. Take a hike. Right? You know, not everybody can take a vacation. I get that. When I was full time playing and I wasn't, I didn't have this like academic university gig, I couldn't take vacations. We just didn't do that so infrequently. I mean, like, so infrequently. 
And usually if we did, it was a quote unquote vacation because I was playing a gig somewhere and brought Jana with or Jana and Augie. And I didn't do that whole lot after Hops was born because things just got more complicated. But take a vacation, take a hike, go outside, take a break. I think everybody needs that. Everybody needs a break. Everybody needs to experience life a little bit. And as an artist, if we're going to write something meaningful, create something that's meaningful, there has to be some real life in it. There has to be some real stuff in it. And so if you're not out there with friends, with family, by yourself, in nature, you're not going to have those experiences to draw on when you're there to create. So it's a way of filling up your cup, right? It's a way of filling up your cup. Take a, take a break. Nature, you know, hikes, being outside. We live in the UP now. And so we spend a lot of time outdoors. Augie's learned how to ride his bike now. And so like I'll run while Augie bikes because he doesn't bike super fast. Sometimes he can bike pretty fast. And so then I got to run fast, which is fun. But it's like we're out in nature, you know, and in the wintertime we're out. We're playing in the snow. Every day after school, you know, it's like Augie comes home and he's like, let's go play in the snow. It's like, all right, throw on the snow pants, go outside, throw some snowballs for a little while, have some fun, laugh, come back in, play some music. You know, it's like even just that little break of like spending time with my family, taking a real good look in the eyes of my two boys and really being present with them. That allows me to, that fills up my cup. So take a break take a vacation I know that that's a privilege so that's tough and not everybody can do it so if you can work in some nature hikes if you can work in you know shorter breaks I don't know what that would look like for you it's gonna be different for everybody for me that's going outside that's taking a hike that's going for a run it's going to the gym I get my own time when I go to the gym work out Go do something, work out, get your body moving. You know, I feel so much better mentally. I was having, I had a lump in my throat. I never dealt with anxiety my whole life. And then like, you know, everybody, everybody that has dealt with anxiety forever, like my wife, who's always dealt with this, you know, there's this, there's this like, oh, you got anxiety now? You got the baby anxiety because, because of the pandemic, you know, it's like, and I wasn't even... I don't know. I don't know that I like, I was pretty like, okay. It felt like I was all right. But then it's like, after things opened up, it's like I had this lump in my throat all the time. And part of it was like, I wasn't, I wasn't treating myself well. I was probably drinking a little too much alcohol. It's like, I'm not getting, getting enough sleep. And it wasn't that much alcohol. I mean, I'm talking like a couple of beers, glass of wine, you know, it's like, but if it's every night, it's like it starts to add up and uh i quit drinking i don't know if i think i said that on the dave chisholm x episode i quit drinking i've been out of it now oh my phone's recording me so i can't look i have an app that shows how long it's been a couple months i think been out of it a little while and i feel really good i feel really good and part of it is like i'm, I'm working out super hard and so like i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to be healthy my dad died at 59 you know and he was, he played basketball three times a week with his buddies. It's like he wasn't badly out of shape. Just like he ate, didn't eat well and, and probably didn't, wasn't active enough for a long period of time of his life. So I'm, I'm really trying to be in t- intentional about taking care of myself. And part of that is not drinking. I don't know if that's a forever thing or not. But part of it's not drinking. Part of it is getting up and, and going to the gym. And I really... I like that time, you know, it's not hard for me to get up anymore. Even when it's, even when I don't get enough sleep, it's not hard for me to get up anymore. And you know what? That lump in my throat's gone. It's been gone for a long time since I started working out again. It's like I I put that energy, whatever that excess energy was, I put it into the weights and, and it's gone. So mentally I feel better. And when you mentally feel better, it's easier to keep going. It's easier to keep working on your, your art. And that's what we're all after, right? How do we fall back in love with this thing? 
because this is our career. This is the career we chose. And it is not for the faint of heart. It's very difficult. And it's really fun and really rewarding. I, I've traveled the whole world. I mean, it's insane how much I've seen. It, really, really cool. It's really cool what I've been able to do. I played in front of tens of thousands of people. Aggregate, but I mean like at one show, <laughs> you know. Montreal Jazz Fest main stage with Young Blood Brass Band. That was insane. It was insane. This little one-off show. Just like football fields of people. It was crazy. I've had s- amazing experiences because of chasing this dream and I would I would not change it. And so the goal is then how do you keep your cup filled? And for me that's Avoiding the jealousy trap, that's listening to new music and celebrating the victories of my friends that are in music, that's revisiting albums that influenced me in my early years, that's going to hear live music, staying inspired by listening to people that are your heroes, that's scrolling less and creating more, so being more intentional about spending less time on social media and more time creating and taking a break every now and then and going out into nature going for a hike, swim in a river. I swam in a river on these trails out here. It's beautiful. It was beautiful and it was cold as shit, but it was really fun. It was really fun. I just felt, you know, when you do that, you feel rejuvenated. Even if you're tired, it's like, it's easy to keep going. It's easy to, it's easier to keep going, keep plugging away. Reinvent yourself. That could be number seven reinvent yourself and I don't know if it really needs to be reinventing but it's like I think that artists change over time and allowing yourself to lean into that is okay it keeps people guessing keeps your music fresh for you we're not just a lot of people are like if you spend on spend time on only one thing and you become a master at that only one thing then then you'll be successful It's like, I just don't prescribe to that. That's too boring for me. I don't think I can. I mean, it's like I could spend a lifetime. I could spend a lifetime just learning how to navigate chord changes as an improviser. Sure. I could do that. But I also want to compose music and I want to sing and I want to write lyrics and I want to collaborate with artists who are outside of the realm of what I do. I want to teach. I want to spread my passion to other people you know I want to build things I want to build companies I have all kinds of interests my dad was an entrepreneur my wife's dad was an entrepreneur I've been surrounded by entrepreneurs my whole life I like that too you know so along those lines tell a friend tell a friend about the podcast If you're really digging it, tell a friend about the podcast. And if you've got a band that you're trying to organize everything, you guys are trying to get on the same page, download Gig Boss and use it. It's free. And then send me an email, adam at gigbossapp.com, and just be like, yo, it would be super awesome if we had X, Y, and Z. Uh, 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 There's a photography company in Florida that's using the app. They've got freelancers all over the United States. And they sent me an email, and they were like, hey, could you alphabetize this? Could you do that? Could you do that? Do you think you guys could do that? And I reached right out to my developers and we did those things because those things made sense to me. And it's what that person who uses my app wanted. And they use, they have tons of people who use the app now because of their freelance network. So it's going to grow. It's going to keep growing. and It's going to keep getting better. I hope that you check it out. I very much appreciate you listening to the podcast. We've got a Facebook group. So if you just go to like Facebook and you search gig boss podcast, it'll be there. I post there regularly. We talk about a whole bunch of stuff. You know, it's like recently I posted a thing about how there's 100,000 tracks now being uploaded to streaming sites every day. That's insane. <laughs> it used to be 60,000. You know, it's like I was walking around saying 60,000. It's 100,000 now. 100,000 per day. Okay, so so what does that mean? What are the implications of that? It's like those are the kinds of things we're discussing. And usually there's a handful of people that jump in and discuss these things. And we talk about artistry too talk about all kinds of stuff that's valuable and it's all just 
there. It's all just there for you to come and hang. So there's links in the show notes. Uh, we do still have like a affiliate deal with Ari's Tech Academy. Ari Herstan runs Ari's Tech Academy. Ari is like one of the go-to DIY musician guys. And he's got classes that are taught by leaders in the industry. So if you're interested in any of those classes, they're a little expensive, but they're awesome. And if you type in the code GIGBOSS, G-I-G-B-O-S-S, you'll get 10% off any of those courses that you decide to take. And then we get a cut of that too. So that helps us grow. That helps us, you know, monetize this thing, which we can then take and we can put into the app to make the app better. Pay myself? Never! I've made zero zero dollars on all this. I just like talking. I like talking to you all. And I'm, I'm really thankful that you're here and that you're listening. So thanks. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to you on the flip side. We've got more great episodes coming.